you talk a lot about immigration. Let's slide into the immigration portion of the afternoon, evening. Um, what is the reason why most people who are immigrants come to live in America? It varies. It varies quite a bit. Um, I also want to say Bernie Sanders dropped the jobs issue and dropped the working class issue. Why? Because he's put through the meat grinder of one of the main political parties. Um, and you are not going to get, it is the uniparty in Washington against the people. That was what Trump represented. And, then, and the proof of that was the interview. The interview that Bernie gave, I think it was to Salon, and he was, said something about, he was asked about, I remember the guy that, that oh, I can't think of his name right now, anyway, um, who said, well, yeah, of course, you're for open borders, and Bernie Sanders said, no, that's a Koch brothers idea, they want the cheap labor. That was what his position used to be, but then, oh no, has to be for open borders because he's running as a Democrat. That is what hurts the working class, the, um, the low-wage workers more than anything else. We're just going to keep dumping more low-wage workers on the country. And that is in answer to your question. I mean, a lot of them are coming for the welfare benefits now. As Milton Friedman said, you can't have a welfare state and open borders. Um, and we're getting a lot of that now. Pre-1970 immigrants, pre-1970 immigrants made more money, bought bo more houses than the people who already lived here. Post-1970 immigrants, um, vastly poorer than the people who already live here. Well, that's just competing for resources, both for government benefits and for jobs from our own poor people. How about we bring in people to compete with, with, with talk show hosts and senators um, and governors and uh, Wall Street bankers? Then we'll see you know, how much compassion we have for the rest of the world. But Mark Zuckerberg doesn't want somebody to compete with him for his job. He wants some to bring in people to compete for his landscaper's job. Um, th that is how Donald Trump cares about the people uh, who are being hurt and have been left behind and ignored by both political parties for decades now. I have a response to that. So. All it takes is a quick Google search to find that undocumented immigrants have no access to government benefits. In fact, yes, in fact, in 1996, uh, Bill Clinton and uh, legislators at the time made it incredibly difficult for uh, immigrants who are in the country legally to have access to uh, government benefits or, or government programs. And so it's a complete fear-mongering talking point from the right that people are coming into this country and they're mooching off American taxpayers. The only people who are mooching off of American taxpayers right now are oil companies and the wealthiest people who... It's, it's, it's really a great, it's a great, it's a great, it's a great distraction to have Americans look at the little guy and blame them for all their problems when the wealthiest people in this country are basically raping and pillaging us, right? So that's what's happening. To go back to Therese's original question about why people are coming into this country, um, right now, Immigration from Mexico, so Mexican immigrants, is down, okay? Uh, Mexicans are not trying to come into the country the way they were before, mostly because of some of our um, policies, but more importantly because their economy is doing better, right? So they, they have no reason to come here. Economic reasons was the main reason why um, Mexican uh, immigrants were coming into the U.S. But all of a sudden we're seeing an increase of people from Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador trying to cross the border first of all, cross the border into Mexico and then cross into the United States, which has become pretty impossible considering the increased border security that we have because of the Obama administration. Now, why are they trying to come in? Well, there have been spikes in violence in those countries. Okay, there have been uh, drug traffickers, cartels that have increased violence. Uh, you've heard about, you know, decapitations and all that stuff. Well, the reason why they're so powerful is because of the drug war that you're very supportive of. We've spent one trillion dollars on the war on drugs since 1971. We're not only wasting our resources, we're literally fueling drug cartels in other countries, which is upping the ante when it comes to undocumented immigration in the country. So that's what's happening. Uh 
A lot of studies show that the number one reason that immigrants give for illegally crossing the border is family reunification. They want to reunite with their family. Do you think that it is immoral to break uh, immigration law to reunite with your family? Um, it is a total lie that illegal immigrants do not get um, all kinds of government assistance. Please do Google that. But don't just look up. Any idiot can write on the internet. Look it up. They can get Please food stamps. Up. They go into emergency rooms. They get schooling. They get English as a second language. They get the SNAP program. Um, whoa, they get full health care in California. Um, it is not saying that illegal immigrants are the little guy. They're not our guys. Americans don't have a problem paying for our own poor, our own sick, our own injured. But the idea is we're like a family. We're all in this together. Aren't you in favor of welfare reform? And you say, but, you know, there but for the grace of God go I. Okay, but you don't get to, this isn't the entire world we're talking about. We're not turning America into, you know, the universe's charity ward. We need to take care of our own. Um, and that's what's hurting the little guy. Um, the reason illegal immigrants say they're coming for family reunification is because that, that's what you got you a free bus pass and a box lunch in the Obama era, whatever they need to say, to be moved into the interior of the country. But this idea that, oh, oh, I have, you can't break up my family. Well, okay, all of you go back then. I think it's hilarious that you're sitting here saying that you care about taking care of our poor people and spending our taxpayer money on government programs that help our poor people. Um, you've been on the record on multiple occasions talking about how much you hate the welfare state. And so you don't care about taking care of anyone. You care about lower taxes for yourself. And that's pretty much it. And if, I and just if tried to explain, but again, it's like talking to the old Soviet woman who doesn't grasp the free market. Name calling this is This isn't super a classy. question of whether we take care of our poor. And I must say, um, immigration makes everything harder. And one of the biggest things it makes harder um, is the distribution of of welfare. Um, look at all of the scams on welfare. Is that going to the poor? No, it's going to the Russians in Brighton Beach, it's going to the Cubans in Miami, it's going to the Arabs up in, in Michigan. Um, one thing that, that um, immigrants, legal and illegal, uh, really have quite a strong pro proclivity for that is not part of our native uh, American, even our Native American criminals, are massive financial flaw frauds and government frauds. They don't consider themselves part of our kin, part of our family. It isn't that they're, we're all in this together. Um, the, the, America is like Disneyland uh, to these criminals. It is ripping off all of these systems. To, so to say you want um, welfare to be, to be distributed in a way that is useful, that helps people, that gives them, um, allows them to get work and jobs, um, is not being against helping the poor, it is being for helping the poor. Away from the financial and economic part of immigration, which we have discussed extensively here, mm -hmm. on the cultural piece, would sure. America benefit from limiting or eliminating immigrants? Well, I mean, I think it makes sense to limit immigrants. We do have, I mean, our resources are not, you know, they're finite. So, of course, it but makes I mean, sense but, to limit. But, 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 but just culturally, because we've culturally. done the financial economic I mean, part. look, I'm not afraid of different cultures, right? Um, I, I'm not afraid of people speaking Spanish. It doesn't get me emotional. It doesn't make me feel scared. And I know that there are some people who feel afraid <laughs> of that happening. Um, my parents are immigrants. You know, my dad was born in Syria. My mom was born in Armenia. I was born here in Los Angeles. And nothing makes me happier than seeing different cultural, uh, you know, different heritages all around me. And, and for some reason, there's this fear on the right in regard to different cultures. I know that you, uh, Anne, have spoken extensively about, you know, oh my God, English is no longer going to be the main language in the United States. 
That's not true. That's not true. And besides which, why does it make you so uncomfortable to hear people speak Spanish, right? Um, and then you also refer to your own uh, family members as settlers. Well, okay, so they got the luck of the draw and they were able to come into this country and settle without, you know, people discriminating against them and stopping them from doing so. But who are we to say, oh, Mexicans can't come in because, as you say, you think they're peasants? I don't think they're peasants. I actually think that they enrich this country with their culture. So. Questions. First of all, the, this sneering mocking of Americans who suddenly wake up one day and find out there no one is speaking um, English in their neighborhoods, um, I think is extremely elitist and snooty. I'm quite sure you all wouldn't like it if your kids came home from school and they sounded like Sarah Palin. Um, I think that would be a cultural shock for you. Certainly in California, um, most of the neighborhoods that have gone all Hispanic are black neighborhoods and not through casual, casual movement. Um, one of the ways our culture changes with, with, with immigration, both legal and illegal, is there is, um, there is not a lot of tolerance, as much tolerance as Americans have. Um, you have black gangs, or um, rather Hispanic gangs, going into the black neighborhoods, screaming epithets, throwing bottles at their houses. The LA Times has written this up extensively. Um, so I think it's very um, sneering and mocking of you to re be referring to mostly African American and other immigrant neighborhoods that suddenly aren't speaking English and oh, they're afraid of Spanish. No, they, they think that their kids shouldn't be turned away from a job at McDonald's because they don't speak Spanish. Um, that was one, one witness's testimony in Congress, a black guy from Los Angeles. Um, and um, I'm settlers, more, I'm more why concerned. does it make a difference that you're a settler? No, it isn't that we just first, first come, first serve. No, it's that settlers created this country. It wasn't here. Um, and yeah, a lot of things change when we bring in particularly such large numbers. I mean, there's a reason that the main immigration restrictionist group in the country is called Numbers USA, not, you know, Mexican suck. USA, it's that we do need to assimilate people to this wonderful country of ours where, where we do learn to be tolerant and not practice racism or anti-Semitism and respect one another. Um, oh, well, for those of you who think that anti-Semitism has gotten worse, the ADL does studies on this every year, and every year they find that the main practitioners of anti-Semitism are your Hispanic friends. So um, you might want to reconsider the mass, just amnestying them all as they're coming in. No, we, I mean, we do have a wonderful country, um, and we need to take time to assimilate people, not let them live in ghettos and bring in their cultures. There's a reason they left their cultures to come to our culture, and we didn't leave our culture to go to theirs. Um. When... Um When you say the settlers created the country, are you including the enslaved Americans as settlers, or is that a separate group? Yes, I am, actually. They were settlers? Um, not settlers in that sense, but, I mean, as many people have pointed out, we, we are not a multiracial country, we are not a multicultural country, we are a biracial country. For 400 years, this country was black and white. Um, and we have had black people here as long as is, white Is this people. a biracial country? And African Americans... I mean, can I finish this point? It seems to have set off the crowd. Um, look, African Americans obviously um, got the short end of the stick for about 200 years. This is why I was, uh, was explaining on the last panel. This is why we have civil rights. Um, this is why we have constitutional provisions. This is why we allow, um, this is why we have affirmative action. It wasn't the Rainbow Coalition. 
It was to make up to redress specific grievances done to African Americans, slavery, Jim Crow laws, um, and now suddenly, you know, everybody's running across the border and, oh, me too, me too, I'm part of this. No, 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 no. No, civil rights are for African Americans. They are not for people who arrived yesterday or last week. We didn't do anything to you. Republicans didn't do anything to anybody. Okay. Um